It's a great pleasure for me to invite Dr. Shakti and addressing on a very important topic about purity of mind and health. Over to you, sir. What a pleasure to see you. Professor Balachandran. Um, thank you to Kanimori as well. Thank you, Ma, for asking to join you. I gather this is the Canadian nine o'clock gathering, but it's become global. Um, it's it's a real privilege to be here to be sharing some of the perspectives that Maharishi has shared with uh, all of us. I thought it's particularly relevant to take this topic, clarity of mind and purity of action. We see a lot of global events, events in our own home, and of course, events happening within our own self that uh, sometimes there is a need for more clarity in our thinking. And oftentimes there is also a need for acting with purity, which is something that Magarishi has really spent his entire lifetime in highlighting, sharing, discovering the values that uh, are timeless, I would say, in promoting inner peace and promoting world peace as well. I thought I'll start with uh, a couple of visuals, if I can share my screen. Just to uh, start us off, I think I have about 20 minutes. Then if time Just permits, we'll have yeah, yeah. No uh, the discussions. Um, any subject, Magarishi again and again has said we should keep being curious, keep asking questions. He himself had lots of questions, some of which really has stuck in my own world and my own life and my own service and my own work. Those are, you know, why do people die? Why is there poverty? And uh, what is God? Where is God? These questions have been timeless and we have been very lucky to have the essence in a very accessible way, very accessible language, very accessible way to act and not just to know, but to do things through the work of Magarishi and Magarishi himself. So that is uh, a boon to us. And I wanted to relate that to our everyday life and not just, just a philosophical concept to apply it to everyday life. That is when it really becomes handy. This is something we will all be familiar with or our expectations or life goes smoothly, straight road, sunny skies. Nothing happens, right? That's uh, mostly what we want to happen or we think it should happen. Of course, life is much more complicated. And of course, it is often like this, whether that is some confusion we are dealing with, some problems in life we are addressing, or in many of the cases where professionals like me dealing with disease, that sort of reality hits either to yourselves or to someone that we really dearly love, our family, friends, close relatives. I think to some extent we can, if we, if we have been used to this and this happens, we can almost go on an autopilot, right? Just Tesla and other autopilots, all the advancement in technology, we can just keep going on autopilot thinking it's a straight road, we'll just keep going, It'll, the problem will go away. That is one way of thinking. And that, again, we see that 
even on a very short reflection of what has happened in the last week, whether that are events happening in the UK or in India, Middle East or America, wherever, Canada, that is not quite what it is. The society or family or individuals, um, we just simply can't assume or rely on going on an autopilot mode to just get through this fog and things will be rosy and sunny. That is not quite what happens. Often we have to react to situations like this. There's a lot of clutter on the path. Signals may or may not be working. And some road works. In fact, there will be other people in the car you're driving or on the road sharing the sharing the road. So the need to act really becomes necessary. Even if we think we know how to, the need to act in the moment, the need to act for that particular situation, for that particular context, often occurs. So not only need, we need to have clear vision of the path, but also have the skills to act. And there are two types of action. One is reaction, the other one's response. You can either respond or you can react. When we react, especially when we react to situations without having trained our mind and trained ourselves, especially in stressful situations, it's easier to fight that situation, easier to run away from that situation. And it is quite difficult to fully respond to that situation to the extent that doesn't hurt us, but even difficult to actually respond in such a way that not only does it not hurt, but it actually leads to benefic beneficial outcomes for either to the self or to the others. That's where I hope I have made the case for the need to be clear, the need to have clarity, and the need to act. And this is where Maharishi really has given us very easily accessible frameworks. Obviously, many of you will know he has written about it in various forms, um, in poems, in essays, in speeches. That need to be clear and the need to act is a prerequisite. And in particular, the values that drive our mindset, the values that drive our actions really become crucial. And we see that um, only when we actually reflect on, on that, we see that. Or only when we investigate the values that are underpinning that, we see that. It's not quite ex it is not quite often explicit. It is hidden. It's, it's behind our actions, the values. It's behind even our thinking, those values. Those are, those are submerged, perhaps in the subconscious, that drives the conscious activities. And that is the subject that we are going to briefly have a brief peek, brief overview of what is that? How do we want, how does one get clarity? And what is the action? What is actually good and bad? What is actually right or wrong? How do we actually go about it? That's the subject for today. It starts with the premise, this is Maharishi's perspective. And uh, for those of you who 
are familiar with some of his um, written works, he has written about this. And the starting point of having the clarity, he starts with Sindhanayil, Or Alavu, Yendor Elam, Sirthirutam, Ulahinile, Malaravendri, Yendavuru Alavenum, Nenekindra. So, even people who have higher thoughts, so this is the first thing. He's, he's starting with people who have developed some knowledge, developed some higher thoughts, even amongst those, especially those who wants to bring about a change in this world. He is wondering. Overorum, Uralavenum, Nenekin Rargal, Sirdurutum Maravenum, Sirdurutum Malaranan, Abdin. And he is wondering, over over, over over, over over, poke and okum bodo or vindai, Rishiki. Meaning, even observing them makes him wonder. You know what he was wondering? Pirar matum, ever kopa vinayatri, weirwala virumbinra. Meaning, even those who have higher thoughts and wish the world to be a better place. Think or can think or often think that everybody should act according to his or her own thoughts. That is his premise. And he goes on further to say that even if others act according to this person's, this person who has developed some level of knowledge about bringing about reforms, even if others act according to this single person's intention, Matravare Panindivara, Matravare Panindivara Vendumendra Mananilayil, Tarukutti Chailpurindu Petra Palan, Kudumbatil Samudayatil, Perundunbum, Pahai, Urur Tanakir, Atra, Ursul Nilayil, Panin the Bodum, Adu Vanja Mananilayai, Valachi Petri, Utra Urukalatil, Periet Ti, Wongi Nilay Kulait Vidum, Unmai Kanbo. Meaning, even if other people look like they are acting according to one's own wishes. If the person who is thinking that everything is going well, without even knowing or storing problems for the future, to the extent that it could become vengeance, and according to the time, the situation, this can lead to the demise of or the downfall of that person who thinks like that, who thinks that I know how to bring about reform and therefore everybody should act based on what I think should be good. And there might even be good intentions. So even for people like that, it can happen. And if it does happen, it's not going to last for long and definitely is most certainly is going to lead to the downfall. That is his thesis. And we have seen it in world leaders more commonly. We see it in families, you know, not children are correct. What I know, what I say is the right thing. Everybody should. And quite often we see that with our children, also with our life partners. So, this is not the right um, way to live in everlasting peace. Is uh, is one of the things I really, really uh, perceived in uh, the value-based teachings of Maharishi is this. Even, even people who want to bring about good reforms, good intentions, this can happen. So how do you go about it? That is the next part. And he suggests, Tanadu kurai aalndu petral. 
meaning one should really understand one's own blemishes, one's own shortfalls and try to correct it. If that happens, Tarukoriyum, Piraridamum Natpu Ongum, Manadu Uru Thuya Nilayai Nadi Chellum, Matravarum Idan Vilevai Nalam Khan Barkar. It's such a paradox. Because the person who is thinking has already got to a stage where he wants the world to be better and so on. But if that person still does that introspection, understands the shortfalls and shortgivings, and take action to his own self. The intention is to bring about worldly reforms, global reforms. Even then, it is important to address one's own blemishes that happens through the ego. That is his suggestion. If you do act to address your own shortfalls, Actually, others also will be happy and the intention of bringing about better change, the likelihood of that is even more. It's very, very, very deep, right? Very profound. Even for those that are thinking for the world to be better to that level they have already achieved. Particularly useful for others also not just for the people who have achieved heights, but those who wish to bring about betterment in our own families. The importance of introspection cannot be brought about in such a succinct way and uh, explained. That's one of the ways that he conveys the importance of manatuimai or the need for clarity of mind. Of course, to reach that stage, we should have done physical exercises, meditation, all of that is preparing ourself to go towards introspection. Just going straight to introspection may not have that much of an effect compared to preparing our body, preparing our mind, calming our frequencies, mental frequencies through meditation that allows us to see our own cassette, probably in a slow motion, just to see where we can be even better. Especially when we want the world to be better, we should focus on ourselves, which is the paradox, which is there in every person. That doesn't mean to say you just stop there. It means to say if you do that, then the chances of you doing good without creating vengeance, but actually creating friendship and harmony and changing the world, the chances will be. So that is a key message uh, that we can see in his, in his works. So that is just the mindset so far. That is just about being clear about how to go about thinking about changing the world or making better of oneself or bringing more harmony and peace. Solving everyday problems. Solving everyday confusions. In fact, solving some disorders and diseases and discomforts to oneself as well. So that is, uh, that is the clarity that we need in our mindset. The second part of um, this morning, afternoon, evening, Canada, UK and India, this is another such a wonderful arrangement through technology and Zoom and people like Professor Balachandran and 
Kadmani and others. We have. How do we just move from just having that clarity towards how do we go about action? So what do we do? Okay, fine. I am introspecting. I am trying to understand that my intentions to change the world will even be better uh, impacted if I turn some attention towards my own self. Fine. Reach that working on it, work in progress. Then the question comes, and this is really important, and it becomes more natural if we do it often. Practice makes perf everything perfect, most things perfect at least, but it is the habituation of how we go about thinking about thinking. <laughs> and not just that, how we turn that into action. There's a key question, and it's there in every Itihasa, every um, literary work in particular, and also in dramas and cinemas, most of the plots work around what is good and bad, what is right or wrong, what should one do, whether you are Karnan or whether you are Arjunan or uh, whoever you are, whether you are a leader, you're a family, head of the family, or a teacher, depending at work, whatever you do, there comes a question. What is right and wrong? What is good and bad? Not just at a theoretical level, what should I do? That is, again, it doesn't happen just for... Uh, the politicians or leaders or doctors and nurses. It happens in everyday home. What should we do as a family? What should we do? What should I do as an individual? Most of Magadishi's work, certainly the earlier stages in foundation, introspection parts, focuses on the self. And then he goes on about societal reforms and world peace. But most of his works, literary works particularly, is all about self. And this question, what should I do? What is good? What is right? What is wrong? How should I go about it? And again, you could write treatises. You could <laughs> you could write treatises. You could read all the Shastras from Atta, Atta Shastra's work. Uh, right up to all the leadership uh, literature, management literature. Most of these things try to um, have this either explicitly or hidden as a question. What is right? Whether it is taxation, whether it is information, whether it is new treatment, whether it is uh, savings, whether 